Hello, friends. I'm coming to you from northern Spain. These are real books. They're not fake bindings. These are my books. They're real books. Never been read, most of them. But I like having them on the shelves, and I reorganize them. But I very rarely read them. Because like many people, my brain has been hollowed out by modern social media and various distractions. But that's not why I'm here to talk right now. I'm here to talk about Jordan Neely and Daniel Penny. I confuse the names because they're both double troches. Daniel Penny, Jordan Neely. Jordan Neely was a high-spirited, troubled, and somewhat brilliant fellow who had done all of these Michael Jackson impersonations and moonwalking and such on the streets of New York. And he was a typical New York street entertainer, someone who provided excitement and interest for all of us as we passed. Jordan Neely died on a subway. He hadn't, lay, lay, he hadn't laid a glove on anybody. And Daniel Penny, an ex-Marine, took it upon himself to put Neely into an, a, a restraint, a chokehold restraint for 15 minutes, more or less, and killed Neely. And inexplicably, the media always keeps saying he was put in a chokehold, which resulted in his death, or later he was pronounced dead at the scene, as if they're avoiding saying what is plain for everybody to see, that Penny killed Neely. Let's get that straight. It's three words, one short sentence. Penny killed Neely. Maybe at a court of law, maybe for the chief of police, you want to use other language. But we are not in a court of law. We are in the court of public opinion, and we saw what happened. Penny killed Neely. Not just that he killed Neely, but people just watched like it was the Kenny Kitty Genovese case. They just watched it happen. One was recording on a cell phone, and nobody intervened except to help Penny. I don't understand that. I grew up in New Jersey, but I've been a New Yorker all my life in a sense because my father was in the theater and I spent a lot of time in New York City. And then I became a taxi driver and spent many years driving the streets of New York. So I got a good feel for the vibe of the city and I lived in New York City for 20 years. And this is the thing. A person like me who spent a lot of time constantly walking the streets, using the public transportation, buses, subways, even the Staten Island Ferry, going over bridges and driving taxis, yes, all the neighborhoods. So a taxi driver has a better feel for the city than a cop does because a cop is restricted to a precinct. But a taxi driver has to work all five boroughs. Everything about this stinks. I have been on many subways in which there was a problem. A problem of somebody eating a hot Chinese meal with dishes laid out on the, on the bench, or somebody drunk and drugged abusing his friend, or someone else who is just there to ask for money and is making some sort of a speech, or some people are performing. And other times, there have been actual problems. Very rarely, but usually it's just, the problem is just eccentricity and stress. And we all learned to roll with the punches. And in the worst case scenario, if, if someone is a real problem, we change cars. But here's a case where somebody was having a crisis and speaking uh, with deep grief and despair about his problems. And he didn't attack anybody. He was talking, but he, wasn't he didn't touch anybody. So legally, you know, he hadn't done anything. He hadn't put a, laid a glove on anybody. Then he was assaulted by this fella Penny. As I say, an ex-Marine who 
confuse New York City with Minneapolis or maybe maybe uh, uh, Waco, Texas. And he got it into his head that he was going to be a, uh, what, a vigilante? Certainly not a good Samaritan, a bad Samaritan. He throws Neely into a chokehold, which even for three minutes is dangerous. And he had him in for 15 minutes. And people are standing over holding his hands, holding his feet, the victim's feet. And nobody did what I would have done if I had been in that subway. I would have gotten up and I would have gotten over them and I would have said to, to, to Penny immediately, get your arm off his neck. If you want to restrain him, you know, we can live with that. But you, you pin back his arms, get your arm off his neck. We're not going to have a George Floyd situation in New York City because we're better than that. And this guy... This guy kept it up and nobody did anything about it. And the whole thing stinks. Nobody did anything to save this kid. And I'm outraged and ashamed of these New Yorkers for not having protected him. Go back and look up Kitty Genovese, who was a woman who was attacked and murdered over the course of several minutes. I think it was in Queens and neighbors barely lifted a finger to help her. And of course, in this case, you know, with the fascist movement growing, you know, this guy has received $2 million in legal fees donated to him for what? Congratulations, you killed somebody. You killed somebody on a New York City subway who hadn't assaulted you, who hadn't assaulted anybody. And you assaulted this person pretending you were some kind of a cop and you had the right and even a cop probably doesn't have a right to use a chokehold, but you took it upon yourself to what? Restrain this guy? No, you didn't restrain him, you killed him. And nobody did anything about it. So we have to deal with this. We have to talk about it. This guy has to be prosecuted and we have to talk about why no one else intervened to help this kid. And there should be, there will be books about this and there will be movies about this. And this is one of the lowest points in modern New York City history. And of course, the mayor, look at the mayor who is compromised, who is corrupt, and who is a law and order mayor, right? Ex-cop, look what he does, nothing. And the only reason this guy Penny is being charged was because there was public pressure. Well, let's keep the public pressure up and let's talk about what happened. But we start from some facts. The facts are, that Neely was having a crisis, but he didn't physically lay a glove on anybody. And he was killed by an ex-Marine who had him in a chokehold. Well, that's manslaughter. And what about the people who didn't intervene to help him? Morally, they are culpable. 